This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, top of the authoring and writing day to all of you. Um, we have kind of a fun day um, in store for you, but I always want to welcome you to this week's podcast where our goal is to create author success with the show. And as you listen, you're going to hear so many ahas, insights, you'll get tips, how to's that you can take as an author for your publishing and book marketing success. With us is someone that I've been so excited to have. I've told so many people he is coming, he is coming, he is coming, um, that you may know him by all the different things that he has written. And do you have choices? Is it one book, two book? How about over 160 books? including 56 national and international bestsellers. He's got over 23 million books in prints. He has been honored with the Bram Stoker Award, the Hugo Award, the Shamus Award, the Civil Fashion Award. He's won the FSX Reader's Choice Award, the Golden Duck Award, the Scribe Award, and the New York Times Notable Book Award. With us is Kevin J. Anderson. Kevin um, is known by his work relating with all the Dune series. There's a big movie, and I want him to talk about it, that is popping up this fall in October. And that we want to really get into how he started writing. How does he write? Um, and some of the work he's done, even in, you know, the steampunk fantasy area. So we're talking sci-fi, we're talking fantasy today, but we're also talking about how you who are in those genres can take you and your book, your writing to the next, next level that maybe you hadn't even fantasized about. Kevin, welcome to the program. Well, hi, Judith. That's one of those things where, where when somebody reads my entire list of credits, then the show's over, and that's about what we what we oh, have oh, no. to do with. But we, we, yeah, we yeah, have we, things that we could talk about, I think. So yeah. uh, <laughs> lots of things. And, 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 of course, you left out like 700 things, but we, it doesn't I matter. Did, We've got I, you, you comics know and I, publishing and, and uh, TV shows and all kinds oh, of Kevin, things. I, I know. And we should also say, a little, little, little hanger here, asterisk, that you're the director of the pu- publishing grad program at Western Colorado University. Um, yeah, I just started that program. Yeah. I'm in my third group of grad students, and I'm, I'm loving being Professor Anderson as well as best-selling <laughs> author Anderson. Yeah. Well, it is fun. It's a whole different genre when you go into that kind of, you know, listen, my children, and you will learn Versus you will hear. Okay, so yeah. with, with that said, you know, how did you start writing? Let me just well, ask you that. How did you start writing? You know, I'm I'm one of these these people that I have always wanted to write, and it's not just like when I was 30, I said, oh, maybe I'll try a story. When I was five years old, I went, I want to write stories. And and it's because I was watching uh, science fiction movies on TV and and like making up monsters and and I I would draw pictures because I was five I didn't know how to write and so I would like tell stories and I just I want to tell stories and and I my entire life has just been that straight and narrow path although it wasn't always that straight and it wasn't always that narrow but but I everything I wanted to write stories I wrote my first novel when I was eight years old on my dad's little typewriter in his uh, study. I plunked out a story about uh, um, a mad scientist and an injection he makes. And and when I was, I think, 11 years old, I spent all of my allowance savings to buy my own typewriter because I wanted to get a, a keep writing. And, and it just has never, that never deviated from it. It's just uh, in my DNA that I wanted to be a 
writer. So, um, and I went to, uh, I got a job as a technical writer after going to college to get um, a physics and astronomy degree so I could write um, science fiction. I wanted to understand what the science was all about. And mm -hmm. I got my job. I worked for 13 years in a government research laboratory writing respirator safety manuals and chemical protective clothing books. But it it really made, it it was important to me that I could say I was making my living by writing, even if it was writing like boring annual reports. But it was me putting words on paper that was paying the rent. And, and that, I mean, I could have gotten any number of different jobs, but I wanted one that I was writing. And, you know, it, it kind of spun off from that because I sold a whole bunch of stories, and then I sold my first novel, and then a, a multiple book contract, and then Lucasfilm asked me to write Star Wars books, which became bestsellers, and then that spun off. It, it's like this ever-increasing uh, snowball that, that is still rolling along. And and getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> you know, it's like... <laughs> well, you know, we're in Colorado, so we don't necessarily like avalanches too much. But, uh, no. Well, and, and the other, uh, it's taking off like a wildfire. Well, we don't want to use that metaphor either. So... No. Um, it, it, it's it's keeping me busy. Let's just put it that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want all our listeners to know that uh, Kevin will be uh, inducted into the Authors Hall of Fame on September 18th, uh, which is very, very exciting. We're excited to have him here. And what's fun is the person who nominated him also is our MC. And when Dom Testa told me about Kevin, I it was like, ooh, ah, I have to meet him. And I love the idea. Uh, I love the idea of how uh, you write. What are your methods of writing? Do you want to do that reveal? Well, that that's one of the things that I like to talk about a lot, and I'm. This is this is not a book I expected to be plugging, but uh, I wrote a book uh -huh. called "On On Being a Dictator," because <laughs> I um, I dictate my fiction, and I have gotten uh, very adept at being able to uh, just walk along the trails, and I have a recorder in my hand. I have my notes for whatever chapter I'm doing, uh, mm -hmm. and I have climbed every fourteen or fourteen thousand foot peak in Colorado. I've done the entire. 500 mile Colorado Trail. I've I've done uh, hundreds and hundreds of hikes because we live in this beautiful area. And I'll just go out and and I walk and I tell myself the story instead of sitting in uh, in my office and staring at my screen. I like walking around the mountains and listening to the waterfalls and and it, it's like sensory details that that you see all around you while you're uh, while you're making things up and. Uh, it, it kind of goes back to the old storytellers. You know, Homer went around and he told his stories verbally. He didn't. He didn't have a laptop that he could type them on. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and I just, to me, that that inspires creativity. And and so many people ask me, well, how do you how do you dictate things? And and so that's mm -hmm. why I finally wrote that book on being a dictator because I, I just said, here, read that instead of me typing up the answer all the time. Um, and then I have a, a transcription service that, that just I send my audio files and they send me back a word file usually in a day or so. And, and I just find that, well, A, I like hiking, so that way I don't have to take, take a day off if I'm going off uh, hiking. Uh, mm -hmm. You mentioned that I, I write a lot of the Dune novels with Brian Herbert and Dune, mm -hmm. Big Desert Planet. Uh, I've gone out and, and I will hike around in the Great Sand Dunes National Park and talk about this big desert planet and there's nothing like being on the hot sand and listening to the sound as the wind blows the grains around and and just kind of feeling the heat shimmer off of them when i'm describing exactly that for my characters doing their uh their adventures so uh mm -hmm. and i've had other things where uh one of my star wars books where han solo and princess leia are on the polar ice caps of of some planet and I'm out in my snowshoes walking around Rocky Mountain National Park after a big snowfall and describing their adventures in the polar ice cap, but I'm kind of in the same environment myself. So it um, it, it makes for a good story, let's put it that way. Well, it, it 
I guess as a speaker, we're always looking for ways to engage our audiences um, because you have the visual going on with them. It's you're doing exactly the same thing. You're you are taking your readers and their imaginations right to what you are writing. And I, I would think that it's richer and actually more engaging because you're experiencing part of that, too. Well, and there have been many, many studies to show that creativity increases when you're actually doing physical activity, like when you're walking rather than just sitting there with your butt in a chair and looking at a keyboard. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. when I'm out walking, I mean, it just sort of lets my mind ramble. And and when I'm stuck in the office, uh, I mean, right now I'm I'm stuck in the office talking to you, and I've got Mm -hmm. two cats demanding attention. I had... I just heard some <laughs> yowling because we have a brand new kitten who's fighting with the other cats. I'm going, okay, if I was out on the trail, I wouldn't be hearing any of this stuff. And the phone wouldn't be ringing and the UPS guy wouldn't be at the door and, and stuff like that. So I, I like to go out and just get miles away from other people. And as I'm walking along, you can just sort of get into like a fugue state and, and just I, I'm living in my story and just uh, being transported away. And And there's a different... Like if I'm if I'm typing and I'm looking at the words on the screen, there's there's like this enforced distance between me and the story, and because you keep going, oh, I typed that word wrong, or I've got to add punctuation here. But when you're dictating, you don't have to worry about how it's spelled. You don't have to worry about where the commas go. It just you, the story is flowing out. And I've had so many people uh, come up to me like, well, I tried it for five minutes and it didn't work, so I'm not going to dictate anymore. Oh, well, it, it, it's a learned skill. I mean, how many people sat down at a keyboard? I mean, look at your keyboard. Nobody with any common sense would arrange the keys that way. The letters okay. are, uh, in fact, <laughs> if I remember the, the story right, the they, spe- they specifically made the keyboard so that typists couldn't type quickly because the keys would get tangled up in the oh. manual typewriter. All right. Hold that thought. We'll be right back. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Is there a book in you? Or another? Author You shows you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being hoodwinked. If you already have a book out... You will find a supportive and brainstorming community that is connected and creative, no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual Author U extravaganza. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author U's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publishing. Author U is the premier authoring resource in the country, creating community, education, guidance, vision, and success for the serious author. If you want to create a book that has pizzazz, punch, and panache, Author U is for you. Timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted on its social media platforms, and it is free. Discover Author U, where authors go to become seriously successful. Join Author You today at authoru.org. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. With me is Kevin J. Anderson. He is an author of, I I would say, a gazillion books, but at least 160. 
He has won numerous awards. He has sold millions and millions and millions of copies globally. Um, and Kevin is well known for a variety of things, including the uh, writing of, I, I, I want to say the rewrite and the Caking Dune in a whole new um, hemisphere, atmosphere. Would that be safe to say, Kevin? Well, I mean, Frank Herbert, the original author of, of Dune, right. and, and Dune is like the, the best science fiction novel ever. It's like the Lord of the Rings in science fiction. And right. uh, that was published in 1964. And then he wrote uh, a total of six Dune novels, building this story over thousands of years. Uh, and then he passed away in 1985 or six, something like that. I can't remember the exact year. Uh, but he left the story just on a cliffhanger. And then finally, uh, about 15 years after his death, uh, his son Brian and I uh, went back to uh, he had he had all kinds of notes that he left behind and and outlines and and character backgrounds and we just went back into the Dune universe and wrote some uh, prequels to it and then we wrote the grand finale that Frank had outlined and and we're still doing uh, a bunch of uh, other novels in the Dune universe at the same time uh, as as Judith mentioned in, in the earlier part there's a big movie from Legendary Entertainment directed by Denis Villeneuve uh, that's coming out in October, uh, and we've got comics that we've written in it, and there are some computer games being developed. And, uh, so it's uh, uh, Dune is, is building up into a, a highly visible project, so I'm kind of involved. In, I'm getting buried in the sandbox is what I am, so... Well, it seems to me you need to get the sand blowing, or maybe you need <laughs> one, one well, of those. Well, however we stretch that metaphor, it's going to go. Oh, yeah, God, you can go everywhere with a sand pit. <laughs> Sometimes it's a sand pit, as you know, uh, as you get into those. Right. But right, Dune, so Dune is my favorite science fiction book of all time, and I'm very mm -hmm. honored to be working in the in the universe. And Brian and I have worked together for over two decades, and uh, we're just finishing up a new Dune novel right now. In fact, he, he sent me his chapters last night at about midnight. So uh, today I get to consolidate them with my chapters and, and building up another Dune novel. So the readers keep keep wanting them, and, and we keep enjoying mm -hmm. writing them. Mm -hmm. So when you're, can you can you talk about collaboration a little bit? Um, that uh, did, did Brian go to you? Did you go to Brian? Did it just you were at a at a at a, at a sci-fi conference and it was like love at first sight? What, what happened? Well, I I actually because I was such a Dune fan and after Frank Herbert passed away, leaving the story just just hanging there unfinished, kind of a like a, a Luke, I am your father cliffhanger ending uh, to the last Dune novel that Frank wrote. Uh, I waited about fourteen, fifteen years or whatever expecting Brian to finish it, because Brian was a science fiction author in his own right, and he had collaborated with his father. Uh, and, and finally, I just sort of sent him a, uh, a wing and a prayer letter out of the blue. I just said, are, are you ever going to finish this? And, and I mean, in science fiction, everybody knows everybody, but I had not actually met Brian before. So I, we had a mutual friend who, who sent my letter along, and uh, I suggested that we could maybe work together to... Uh, to finish up the story, and uh, Brian kind of contemplated for quite a while, a couple of months, and, and then he called me up just so we could talk. And remember, we had never spoken or anything before, and my wife was in the room, and she said, man, after about 30, 30 seconds, you guys just started speaking a different language. You were finishing each other's sentences. You were riffing off of obscure Frank Herbert short stories and, and all kinds of bizarre things like that. So uh, we we immediately uh, hit it off, and uh, we we I, I flew up to spend a few days with Brian in his house as we brainstormed the ideas, and and it was just this this blur of creativity as we came up with all kinds of these these incredible possibilities, and and then we wrote our our first trilogy, which pub which was published uh, 22 years ago. And we've been best friends ever since, and we just keep keep working on it and and building on the Dune legacy and getting a newer audience and and uh, and enjoying the heck out of it ourselves too. 
But well, you wanted to know about techniques of collaboration. Sorry, I kind of yes. wandered off. Well, off no, into no, that. no. But but so one of the one of your techniques is there is that there is a chemistry of working together. I'm hearing that. Well, and that really is an important thing. And it, there are there are a million different ways to collaborate. Just like there are, I mean, it's effectively a creative marriage. The two of you have to get together and figure out how you how you make it work. And Brian and I. We will meet face to face. I mean, for the last uh, for the last two Dune books, we were a little bit handicapped because of COVID, so we had to do all our brainstorming by Zoom. But but we normally will get together and just like for days, we'll just be talking about the story, which is like the the new Dune book that comes out in in like three weeks is called The Lady of Caladan about Lady Jessica, mm-hmm. and we mm-hmm. we would just sit on the porch and I mean, we know the overall story. And then we start filling in the details, and, and it's almost like a jazz performance where I'll come up with something and he'll come up with something, and then he'll riff off of what I came up with, and we just build it more and more. And by the end of the three or four days, we've got a very detailed picture of what this whole complicated novel is going to be. And we write down an outline. Uh, we're very, very strict outliners no no seat of the mm-hmm. pants kind of writing for us you it's collaboration you both have to have the same roadmap and so we outline the book and it's like late uh the one we just finished is is the third one the air of caladan um h-e-i-r and that's got i think 76 chapters in it so we outline it and then we break it up so that brian gets 38 chapters and i get 38 chapters and then we go off and write our own chapters and we edit them, and then just last night, Brian sent me all 38 of his chapters, and then I'll put them together, and I'll go through the first time. It's kind of like a snowplow after a snow. you got to get all mm-hmm. the little uh, fixes done, and then I send it off to Brian, and he does his edit. He sends it back to me, and I do another edit. He, I send it back to him, and he does another one. So it, we do it on screen. We don't ever um, mark things like, I changed your adjective here. We It's... I trust him completely, and he trusts me completely, and you just rewrite each other's stuff until it is as perfect as it can be, and then so we send it so off. as you re- yeah so as I'm hearing you going back and forth, that your two voices literally do merge into one. Yeah, so, uh, I we kind of defy people to read one of our books and say this yeah. is a Kevin chapter or this is a Brian chapter because yeah. it's all what during the editing process. I will rewrite anything that doesn't sound like me, and he will rewrite anything that doesn't sound like him. And by the end of it, we get this this synergized prose that uh, reads very cleanly, like like both of us wrote the whole thing, which is what uh, we so, so you're really triplets. That's what you're telling me. I'm hearing triplets. Uh, or we're we're two halfwits that we put it together, and it's one <laughs> one brain at the end of it all. So. <laughs> There you go. Well, I, I think that your your recommendation that you have to have a ruthless outline that if you're collab well, I think outlines help in a lot of ways anyway. But just having the outlines and you've got this guide map that you're going through, so you both stay on the same one and someone doesn't get off bent. And I love 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 the the creativity gooses where you just got side to you can feel the elements whether it's the sand the snow the 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 heat, <laughs> the heat, immersing yourself in water. I'm a big person for the beach. I love the toes mm-hmm. in the water. You know, I used to feel there was nothing so, so more sensual than just digging your toes into warm sand. Oh, my God, do I love that feeling. Mm-hmm. So cool. So, Well, and, and when you do an outline, and I, I can hear some, uh, some newer authors, and it, it generally is newer authors. But an mm-hmm. outline stifles your creativity, and oh mm-hmm. no, it doesn't. We we have chapter seven. The two forces have a space battle. I mean, that's our outline. And so when you're writing it, you you have you color within the lines, but there's a lot of room to do whatever you want in there. All the dialogue, all the character development, all the all the other stuff is mm-hmm. in there. And and one of the things that I I mean I love writing. To me, it's just I, making up stories is really fun. What I really hate is, oh, crap, that whole chapter didn't work. We just have to throw it away. And I feel like if I had just planned better, I wouldn't have wasted all the time writing that chapter. And the, the seat of the pants writers spend a lot of time going down like dead ends, and then they end up throwing that storyline away or throwing that chapter mm-hmm. away. And and I would, 
uh, you know the old carpentry adage, you measure twice and cut once? Well, if, if you do your outline, you're measuring twice. You're, you're actually taking the time to go, this is where I want the story uh, to map out, and I'm not going to go off on, a, on the wrong tangent. And, mm-hmm. and, I, we, and it's not, we do our creativity in the planning state. We spend so many days just thinking of the chapters, thinking of the chapters, and how does it go, so that when we start writing, we're basically turning on the spigot and dumping the story onto the page that, that's already in our heads. Mm-hmm. And, and it just, well, I'll, I'll let the 170 books speak for themselves. It, it, it kind of works. I, I love the turning on the spigot. I, I am, um, my outlines, actually, I do them on sticky notes. Kevin, I, mm. I, I we were we were on a cruise. Kevin, John, my husband John came back in the room, and the entire sliding glass door was multicolor sticky notes. And I, because I have a coating that I will use for certain mm-hmm. things that I want with it, that, and and the whole thing was laid out. That's you know how I'll start doing my outlines, and I'll whiteboard them and do those kind of things, and I have them always visually I can look at. And sometimes the idea was great, but maybe it's in the wrong area. It's it's so portable and stick stick over here. So <laughs> that's mm-hmm. how that's how I do stuff. But well, I. We- I that, we used to do almost exactly the same thing with colored index cards, like the, the exactly. Duplato storyline exactly. is a green index card, and the Baron Harkonnen storyline is a yes. red index card. And, yes, 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 yes. And we'd lay them all out on the floor, and then the cats would come in and roll around in them and mess our story up. So um, I, I know. It's hard for the cats to roll on the on the door. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, and that, but we've evolved now. We, we do it yeah. with, in Microsoft Word, but we do different colors like if we still we change uh-huh. the, the, the yeah. that sentence to green and that sentence to blue and that sentence to red and and just so that we can yeah. but but the whole idea still is when you're plotting it, it's like building a blueprint for your your hotel if you're going to build a hotel and and it's a visual thing with all these uh with all the colors and if you've got if you have all the colors you can easily see it's been a long time since we've had a red chapter and it's been a long time since we've had a, a there's too many blue chapters in a row and that that kind of thing mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. so easy to see visually when you do it that way ah and a red chapter could be huge conflict drama trauma oh my god i mean i would do that in red all right we're going to take another quick break with us with is the amazing awesome unbelievably prolific Kevin J. Anderson. He's got a new movie that he has has his fingers on, and I want him to talk a little bit about it when we come back in October. We'll be right back. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Discover the power of you and your book at the Judith Bryles Unplugged events. Each summer, Judith Bryles Book Marketing Unplugged unfolds over three intensive days working with just Judith. You get publishing strategies, author and book platforms, book marketing panache and pizzazz, and authoring tools to take you and your book to rock star success. In the fall and winter, Judith Bryles Speaking Unplugged includes Judith as your coach and mentor during two powerful days. You will learn how to structure a speech, how to create openings and closings, how to find gigs that pay you and sell your books, and you will get one-on-one coaching. Go to thebookshepherd.com and click on the events tab to learn how to participate at the next Unplugged Workshop event. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Just 
today we're a little bit all over the map, but it's actually about creativity in your writing. And and with us to guide us is Professor Kevin J. Anderson. <laughs> and many of you may know him as the, the master creator storyteller, collaborates with Brian Herbert with all these Dune um, books that are out there. Plus, he's got a boatload. He's got a zombie series. We'll get into that. But there's just so much going on. But there is, and I, I and I kissed on it just a little bit as we we're segueing. But there, there is a big movie debuting this fall. Is that not right, Kevin? Uh, yeah, there's a a new uh, remake of the original uh, Frank Herbert classic Dune, which comes out. Uh, October twenty twenty first twenty second. So I I don't have the exact date, but it, counting it down, and it it looks looks really good. But because it's big movie studios, they they like to put gag orders on people and not let us talk out of school. So I can't give you any secrets. Sorry, but other than well, That's if it. you go to well, we have our our Dune Novels dot com. So it's Dune Novels dot com. Uh, mm -hmm. We've got a bunch of the movie posters there. We've got the movie trailer uh, and a bunch of stuff about our, our new books and things. So uh, watch the movie trailer. It is awesome, and I, I can't wait to see the movie in the theater myself. Well, I am, I'm going to go watch the movie trailer because I am dying to know if, the guy, if, if his eyes are turquoise. I'm dying <laughs> to know. <laughs> see, I you'll saw. see it. You have to look carefully maybe, but the, you'll uh, see it. Okay, I'll look carefully, but but I do want to tell a lot of you for some of these big movies that you know you say okay, but you know I can be the walrus, uh, you know the the walrus potato, the couch potato, or whatever you want to call it. But some of them you need to see on a big screen. I mean a humongous screen. Kevin and I were talking on the break. I remember back when my husband, who who uh, Kevin, he has some original. 1931 John's 90 um uh, amazing stories comic books we have uh -huh. a whole bunch of stuff like that here in boxes uh -huh. and um i remember he drag he dragging me off and i settled in i had my popcorn okay as you know, john wants to see this movie and when the spaceship came over and then you said all this the scrolling the first time i think we've ever seen that scrolling from the bottom of the screen and it disappears uh -huh. at the top. I was so hooked. I was so hooked that I, you know, I would not miss, you know, any of those movies. <laughs> Period. <laughs> so don't stay home and watch it on your TV. Go see the big movie theater instead. But yeah, um, that's the bottom line, everybody. Dune in the theaters in October. So <laughs> with that said. But while you're um, waiting, you can read Dune books, which is what we really oh, do. And that's yeah. Like okay. That. So, and, and so if, you, I mean, when you have 165 books and, and, and your books are breeding, you know, Kevin, I've always told authors, you know, you say, well, I'm just going to write one book. What nonsense. Books breed books. Once you start the process and get into it, other ideas start formulating. And that's exciting. To me, that's very exciting in the process. Well, and I, I, you know, I just tell stories, and my my brain is wired to, okay, well, we have a an old west story, and you want an alien in it, and okay, where do we go with that? And we, uh, it it's just like um, it, like those Iron Chef contests where you have a cook, and they say, here's the five ingredients, make something, and a good chef always can make something. And as a writer, we're kind of like an Iron Chef with words. It's like, okay, here we've got characters, here we've got scenarios. Let's see what we do. And I have known writers who they, they really only had one book in them, or, or they this is their series and they can't do anything else. For me, it just feels like my head would explode if I don't keep releasing the pressure. I got to keep getting these the, these voices out of my head and the crazy crazy characters and the the strange ideas. And um, you know, and I have a lot of books that I write for myself because this is the book that I want to write that I'm inspired to do. But then I also have somebody will will come to me, and uh, I've written 54 projects for Lucasfilm based on Star Wars, uh, mm -hmm. a whole bunch of novels, kids' books, comics, all kinds of things. And they would come to me and say, we need you to write a sequel trilogy to Star Wars, and then I would send them some ideas, and they'd say, yes, we picked this one, and then I would write a new Star Wars story. 
uh, I'm a Star Wars fanboy, so it's like giving me the coolest toys in the world to play with. But you still have to do a story following the parameters of Star Wars. Mm-hmm. And and it, it's sort of... It, I, I, there are some people going, well, how can you write for somebody else? And how can you, if it's an existing universe, how can you do that? And I said, well, that's like a five-star chef in a in a restaurant. He still has to make the order that the customer orders, right? If you're a great chef and somebody orders lamb chops, you still have to make lamb chops, and that's what they want to eat. So you just make the very best lamb chops that you can. You add all the embellishments and you can tell it's almost lunchtime because I keep adding these food metaphors when I'm putting it in there but uh, <laughs> but uh, just working on Star Wars was was like one of the most fun things that I ever did and it it uh, it, it certainly skyrocketed my career because of course Star Wars novels have a lot bigger audience <laughs> than random Kevin J Anderson novels do so well who knows but speaking of eating so um, and and the Chewbacca uh, I'm going to add on to your food thing. So I, I have a question. When I, I read some of these books, especially the, the sci-fi and the fantasy, I, I always wonder, where do you come up with some of these names? How, how do some of these names come to you? And do you have a, the pronunciation? I mean, if you look at it in writing, how do you pronounce some of this stuff? Wow. Well, see, I just finished a, a big epic fantasy trilogy, kind of like Game of Thrones. Um, it's called yeah. Spine of the Dragon is the first one. And, of course, that's all uh, fantasy races and fantasy countries and kings and, and magic systems and everything. Um, because this is – sometimes when you do a fantasy, it's literally based on Norse mythology or, or Japanese mythology or something like that. Mm-hmm. But then you you have to use these names and maybe adapt them a little bit so that it sounds like it's your own – uh, fantasy thing, and I'll, I guess I'll go to a music metaphor right now. That you know what like Middle Eastern music sounds like, and you know what jazz music sounds like, and you know what um, Mexican music sounds like. They all have a certain flavor to them, and if you're doing, uh, if you're making names, and you have like the the evil Dragon King, well, well. Evil Dragon King probably isn't going to have a name like Sophie. The Evil Dragon King is going to have like Brackadur or, or something harsh and hard like that. And and the the beautiful romantic princess is going to be uh, uh, Kailalia or, or you know something that that rolls off your tongue and sounds sounds pretty. So you kind of get used to finding the 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 sonic undertones, because when people read the name, they can kind of pronounce it in their heads, and it and it gives them a a mood. Um, but it's mainly by the seat of my pants. I'm, I'm giving that whole explanation, and it's mainly like, oh well, I'm going to use this name because it sounds cool. And, and I might keep mm-hmm. a, a a list of like if I come up with a name, I might just keep a little piece of paper where I just write down, oh here's a cool name. I got to use that sometimes. And I've even had. Uh, I, I do a lot of book signings and a lot of comic cons and things, and mm-hmm. and these and fans will come up and they have me sign a book, and I I used to keep a little notebook of oh, that's a fascinating name I got to use that for something and and I'll tell them I'm going to use it somewhere, uh, mm-hmm. so that's where it comes from. Well, you know, my husband had heart surgery, and when we met the surgeon, he came in, and this is all the COVID thing. He is, uh, he was born in South America, and he has that truly South American look, but his name, his name was the best. If I was a romance ladder, I would be snagging his name and using it in a nanosecond, and you never know where some of these names also, it, it wasn't Sam Jack, his first name was Diego, Diego, he looked, he looked like Diego. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then he he had a name that was Italian at the I mean God he was a hunk. But the thing is that you know sometimes you I wouldn't have thought of a name like that putting together this and that and come up with that. But that's where your dictation 
uh, method. And, and I want to just mention that to everyone um, on his book. I would recommend that you get it. If, if you're thinking of getting your, your, your butt out of the chair and trying to shorten things and move faster, I was sharing with Kevin during our break that several of my books have been fully dictated because I didn't know how to write, so, but I did know how to talk and I taught. So I started that way, but to on, it's called on being a dictator, using dictation to be a better writer. I'd highly recommend it. It's available in Kindle and paperback snag it. If you want to be more productive and prolific, um, and move yourself to the next level in your writing skills. So I thought, it'd get, I, you know. let, let me also jump in because we were talking about collaborations and I had mm-hmm. my wife and I also wrote one called writing as a team sport. Uh, about all the different techniques of collaboration. There, mm. we're, we're here talking about my big best-selling novels and stuff like that. But I, I always spend time uh, trying to do because we give writing workshops and lectures and things, and I try to put my my lectures into uh, into useful books that they can use. Uh, and in fact, just this morning, the, literally the hour before this this interview, uh, this year's book went up for sale. It's called Slush Pile Memories. It's my my experience as an editor going through the slush pile and all the really stupid things writers do when they send in stories to an editor. So don't let this happen to you. So uh, that that's another thing that might be useful for writers. We try to, uh, I like to say, I made all the mistakes so you don't have to. So we, we, we're just trying to help people make their writing career uh, on track. Well, I would love in our in our final segment, I would love to have you kiss on a few of those things that are the uh, the slush. The slush pile is saying, feed me, feed me. It's so good. This stuff is so No, bad. the slush pile is saying I'm full. I don't need any more is what the slush pile is saying. <laughs> well, but it has to start somewhere, Kevin. I mean, it, it didn't start full. It starts right. empty and it just it keeps filling up. And I see common things um, over and over and over again. Um, and, and, and I'll just say this for, for all of you who are writing nonfiction, that remember you're writing, you're, you're writing your advice, your wisdom, your sage to a person. It's a you. So I, I've always, my button gets pushed that I see the that passive writing well when we do this children um and it's always we 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 instead of you're telling one person one person um how to improve their life or how to change their ways or how to eat better or what it's a you it's not we're gonna we're we we are eating together no we're not you're eating so That's one of my things. Anyway, we'll be right back with us is Kevin J. Anderson. We're talking about um, writing. We're talking about creativity. We're talking a little bit about collaboration. I want him when we come back from the Author You, your guide to book publishing break here, just a minute, um, to talk about how to avoid the slush. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Are you confused about publishing options? Do you know which printing option is best for your book? Does your stomach flip when you think about selling books? Or do you feel overwhelmed with what to do about book marketing and publicity? Get the answers and much more. Get them and from someone who knows publishing inside and out from both the traditional and independent sides how to make a successful book. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so. Or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand and platform, and is a success, a bestseller. It is your choice. You choose. If you want author and publishing success, you want Judith Bryles as your book coach. Sign up for her weekly blogs and e-zine at thebookshepherd.com.
The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing, and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and guide to collaborate with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You do not need more problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Riles will shepherd you through the maze and chaos. At times, she has had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher, by a publishing service provider, and sometimes even by the author. If you want author and book success, connect with her today at thebookshepherd.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Years ago, I spoke at one of the um, one of the cons. They all they all have different names, right, Kevin? Oh There's yeah, they're Comic all individual Con. conventions. They're all different conventions, and I spoke at one of them locally here in the Denver area, and they wanted me to come in and talk about publishing. My boo boo. Well, I mean, it was a fun talk. They were a great audience. My boo boo. There was no one behind me to take a picture. Because I was talking to aliens. They were all in costume. It was the best. It was the best. <laughs> and I always have regretted not having that picture. Because that would have been fun. And well, just, I, I, do, I do so many. Well, COVID kind of stopped it for a long time. Just last uh-huh. week was my first uh, big convention in a year and a half. It was mm-hmm. Planet Comic Con in Kansas City. And I think they had about mm-hmm. 40,000 people there. Uh, mm-hmm. Not everybody in costume, but a whole lot of them were. Mm-hmm. Uh, and next week, I'm going to be in Atlanta for Dragon Con, which is, uh, I think, the biggest science fiction convention, uh, certainly in the country. And and there's just so many people, and they're fans of all different things. And because I, since I write all different things, I have a lot of uh, fan bases there. So I, I sign a lot of autographs. I talk at panels, and and we meet. I mean, I meet other authors and agents and editors and. And it's a great time, so we we like to do that, and and it's still a little bit iffy with the Delta variant sweeping all over the mm-hmm. place. So we're all fully masked and fully vaccinated, and and uh, yep. hoping that we come back without getting the usual colds that we usually get at conventions. Oh, me too. I used to live in the cold land, <laughs> but I did it then on my own. I was always sick, um, and and I, and I think I got more sick from either the hotel or the plane rides. It was between the two of them. It wasn't the people. It was, it was the transportation. So, all right. So I, I wanted to, before we leave, to talk a little bit about your your uh, graduate program in publishing. So let's just kiss on that a little bit so people will know. Sure. Um, a few years ago, Western Colorado University, which is down in, in Gunnison, Colorado, uh, they approached me to to basically create and revamp their their publishing MA program, their graduate program, uh, in publishing. And I did it, I think it's a, a innovative and unique program where it is literally split between half and half with traditional publishing and indie publishing because indie publishing is so hot right now. This is what, yep. what people want to learn. And since 2010, I've run my own a mid-sized publishing house. We use indie methods, and we do print-on-demand, and we do our own cover designs, and we do our own layout. And so I can speak, well, on the traditional publishing side, because I've been published by every major publisher, and also the indie side. And and I don't come from academia, so I'm teaching them not esoteric stuff to write term papers about. I'm teaching them real hands-on, this is how you do publishing. And the students have a um, their group project for their thesis is we've gotten grant money and we do a professional anthology every year where we pay six cents a word, 
uh, it, it is, uh, they get hundreds of submissions in the slush pile that they have to read and reject, and then they accept the ones that are the best. They write the contracts. They do the copy editing and work with the authors. They design the cover. They lay out the, uh, the interior. They do the marketing. They run Amazon ads. They do all the uh, book review copies. Uh, our first one uh, that came out last year, uh, called Monsters, Movies, and Mayhem, uh, just won the Colorado Book Award for the best anthology of the year. So they, they did a good job. And then the second group of students uh, came out with one called Unmasked, which was just released last month. And I'm starting my brand new group of students right now. So if, if you're, if we teach all the, the copyright and contract, uh, book, book contracts and editors and agents and, and, uh, a whole bunch of indie publishing things and interior book design and cover design and and marketing. So uh, I I think it's a great program. We we have filled up just about every single year. Uh, we're open for applications now, and it starts uh, next July is when the next group will start. And it is all online except for one week where you have to be in person at the residency uh, down in beautiful Gunnison, Colorado. So it's not like it's a big big hardship to go to beautiful Colorado mountains in the summer. Uh, you can find more information. My own website, wordfire.com, has a whole section on the publishing master's degree, and that'll give you more information there. So I, I, thanks for the chance for the plug, Judith, because this is your audience, I think, is just the right people that we want to have for this program. Well, let me ask you this. How many people are in it? How many people can uh, we, be in it? We, it? Maximum cap is at 14 because we manage... All these projects, and 14 is about the most that we can. I have one other professor who also runs a publishing house, and the two of us tag team all of the students. Uh, we have them go through solo projects, and uh, it's it's capped at 14. So, we, in fact, we've already got two accepted for next year, and we just started the semester two days ago. So, um, and it's one and it's one semester. How long is it? How long is it? It's the one year. So it, it's, it's one fall year. semester, the spring semester, and then the residency in the summer. Okay. Well, and Kevin is right. Uh, Colorado summers. I mean, it's been a little hot this year, but so has it been just about every place else. Yeah. And, and but you're up in the mountains it, with the wildflowers and everything. So it's nice. and it, but it's cooler. Also, mountains yeah. are cooler. So you have that in play. So information, costs, and all that are on your, your wordfire.com website, Kevin? Uh, yeah, wordfire, not woodfire. Make sure they don't type it wrong. So it's wordfire, Word. uh, and there's links to signing up. The, the, whole, the whole Master of Arts uh, degree is, I think, a total of $21,000, which is very reasonable for a, a master's degree. Mm -hmm. and, and, of course, you know, there are student loans, so I'll just say that <laughs> to help out with yeah. that. I, you know, I feel, I'm very for, feel fortunate also because I come from the traditional publish. 18 of my books, I, I don't have 165. I only have 38. But, oh, but you're, um, you're it's, just it's a, a baby. Start. You're starting it, out. No, okay. I'm in this. Uh, I, I, I'm a toddler now. I'm walking. Okay. All right. So 18, we're with New York, and I was a well kept author. I mean, I it, it wasn't until I had a client who I was doing a presentation for saying, could you could you see if you could get a few copies of your book um, for when you're going to be out here? Uh, we'd like to buy a few and see if they'd give us a little discount. Well, I had just taken back the rights, Kevin, of the book. And I had bought the entire remaining stock, which consisted of 60 books. Well, when someone says a few to me, few is under 60. Um, and then, and I said, I'm sure I could do that. Would a third off? Would that work for you? And he said, oh, that'd be great. Okay, so we'd like a thousand to start. And that's what propelled me oh, into, man. I know. So I had a conversation with the plant in my corner and we decided we'd do it. And that's what propelled me into learning really learning the business and the dollars and cents of publishing. And I have never looked back. Starting my own imprint in 2000, never looked back. That it, indie is hot. When Kevin says indie publishing, if you will learn that this is a business and respect that and understand that your book is a product and that there's products have, have to be marketed, people, you will, you're on your way. So. Well, and I do. I really, really want to want to insist, though, that when people 
so many people are like, well, you're just a new author, and just publish your own book. That's kind of like when you walk into Home no. Depot and they say, no. you know what, you can just remodel your entire kitchen. Don't hire a contractor. And don't try this at home. You, you really need to know what you're doing. And, and well, that's what my degree is all about, but there are so many other places you can learn as well. But I've seen so many indie authors where they just go, oh, I'm just going to throw this badly formatted thing with a terrible clip art cover up on Amazon and expect to sell a million copies. And no, you're not. <laughs> you might sell five copies to your relatives is about what's going to happen unless uh, you know I what you're doing. And I echo that. You, if you sell five copies, um, actually, your relatives will expect you to give them a copy. But <laughs> with that said, well, and that's what I, I've had that conversation. I go, no. If you if you respect my work, then you, my family, can buy a damn copy. And um, yes, then you lose your friends that way. But you know, that's okay. Well, maybe they're not your friends. Yeah. So, uh, but but it's really important to understand this that you need if you're gonna if you're gonna take this route the the independent route you have to create a professional team that will bring it together and we're talking about your cover counts it counts big your back cover copy counts hugely how your book lays out is important oh did you have editing oh well, you know my best friend edited oh my god gag me. I, Kevin, I can't tell you how many times I want to be gagged when people <laughs> tell me their mother edited their book or their best friend. Well, my wife edits <laughs> mine, but she is a professional editor, so she'll do that. She, but, she, yeah, but, and, but, yeah. but what you mentioned about your other thing, though, is you could make a great deal of money if you're going to do talks and selling a 1,000 copies yourself. If you're not willing to pound the pavement and do mm -hmm. library talks and do comic cons and do whatever mm -hmm. to hand sell your book, if you mm -hmm. sit back and go, well, I listed it, I want somebody else to do all that work, well, then this job is not for you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for saying that. So I'll just tell everyone, get my book, How to Create a Million Dollar Speech. I've sold a million copies. I'm not a Kevin Anderson, but I did sell a million copies. I did make several million dollars in speaking fees. And 95% of my books were sold at full price. And guess who got all the money? I did. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I'm just going to say that. Kevin J. Anderson, thank you for being with us today. <laughs> I appreciate it. I had a lot of fun. Thank you. All right. So everyone, go discover Word, WRDfire.com. Check out the uh, the graduate the, the 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 masters of publishing program and and sign up for Kevin's blog follow where he is because if you want to see a master at work if you want to really learn this business which includes the marketing the swag getting out in front of people and 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 see how it works follow what Kevin's doing he's 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 there he's done it and go see the movie in October how's that <laughs> That, that sounds great, too. Thank you, Judith. All right. You're so welcome. All right, everyone. Thanks for spending the hour with Kevin and myself. Your authoring and publishing success is always, always, always up to you. And remember that your words matter. Let's get them out, but get them out correctly. Thank you for being a part of your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryle.